Good day, everyone. How are you doing today? My name is Dr. Nee. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Northwell Health, and I'm based out of New Hyde Park. And I'm here to talk about an important topic uh, to the active seniors and uh, preventing and treating orthopedic injuries. This is a very important topic because as people get older and older, they tend to get more injuries. And to avoid these injuries while staying active is very important. All right, things I'm gonna go over today. Who am I? Important considerations to think about when you're starting exercising, common injuries, important injury prevention concepts, what to do when you have pain, and what to do if the pain continues despite the initial treatment. All right. I'm a board certified orthopedic surgeon. I'm fellowship trained in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. That's a big mouthful, but basically I treat rotator cuff injuries, I treat meniscuses, I treat ACLs, I treat dislocated shoulders, I treat hip labral tears, I treat ankle issues. I treat a whole host of injuries uh, that you can sustain while being active um, or playing sports. All right, things to think about before beginning any type of activity. Are you healthy enough to proceed with your planned exercise? It's important to consider what medical issues you may have, whether it relates to your heart, your lungs, or other organs in your body. If you have pre-existing medical conditions, it's very important to take these into account when considering what exercises you can proceed with. And do you have any pre-existing orthopedic conditions? Do you have arthritis in your joints? Have you had prior surgery on your rotator cuff in your shoulder? Do you have bad, bad back? These are all things you need to think about when you're thinking about starting uh, exercise. Okay, first off, please ask your primary care doctor if you're healthy enough for your planned exercises. I know this is a pretty common recommendation, but it's very important because if you have a heart issue or a lung issue, it's very important to choose the right type of exercise uh, so as you don't overly stress your heart or your lungs or other organs in your body. It's very important to consider these uh, and discuss these with your doctor and um, get his or her blessing, okay? Other things to think about are osteoporosis. As you get older, you have problems associated with weakening of the bone. And so therefore, you may want to consider exercises that may help preserve bone and also consider your bone density. If you have very weak bone, you will have to think about proceeding with exercises that will limit your risk of injury to the bones. Okay, as I discussed earlier, think about any pre-existing orthopedic problems you have. Do you have bad knees, a bad shoulder or a bad back? These are very important things to discuss with your trainer or your therapist because they can make accommodations or focus on exercises that may not exacerbate your pre-existing problems. Okay, so let's discuss common problems in the aging athlete. Um, you have increased risk of fractured bones from falls. Uh, this is because uh, bones as you age naturally start to become more brittle and less strong, and this is called osteoporosis. Um, and this affects people at varying rates. However, exercise, especially weight-bearing exercise, is very important because it actually delays and decreases the amount of osteoporosis. So if your doctor has diagnosed you with early osteoporosis or osteopenia, it's very important to have a good exercise program because this will help maintain your bone density and decrease your risk of fractures. Uh, this is important because as you age, you have a 40% increased occurrence of falls. And so therefore, you're more likely to fall. And if you have weakened or osteoporotic bone, you're more likely to uh, suffer fractures during these falls. Uh, these falls occur because you have a significant decrease in your muscle strength as you age and you have a decrease in your reaction ability and your reaction times increase and you have an impaired balance as a result. Other things that can happen as you get older are injuries to the muscles and tendons about your shoulder and knee most commonly. 
Uh, this is due to a loss of strength and stretchability, as well as overall wear and tear for multiple years of, of uh, use and exercise and sports. And the buildup of these uh, wear and tear due to the uh, decreased healing potential as you begin to age. And now let's talk about some common uh, injuries uh, within the uh, joints. Uh, tendonitis is very common. Uh, it's basically an accumulation of wear and tear and inflammation in the tendons around joints, especially the shoulder and the rotator cuff is very, very common. And it's important to keep active because certain specific exercises can actually help treat and prevent the development of tendonitis. Meniscal tears. Uh, everyone, I'm sure many of your friends have had a meniscus tear and surgery for them in the past. They're the knee's cushion, and their purpose is to prevent the wear and tear of the cartilage inside your knee. And the cartilage is the uh, smooth surface that prevents the, uh, the bones from rubbing and prevents pain. Uh, the meniscus tears as you age because the collagen, the protein fibers within the meniscus tend to lose their stretchability and become more brittle as you age. Think of it as a rubber band. Uh, as rubber bands age, they become brittle and they can snap. And that's a similar analogy for what happens in your meniscus. Other things that happen as you age are arthritis and joint pain. Again, this is the gradual wear and tear of the cartilage over various joint surfaces, most commonly the knee and hip, but also can happen within the ankle and shoulder as well. And the most common injury is muscle soreness. It's uh, due to a slower uh, and decreased regeneration potential as you age, and your body requires more time to recover after exercise. If you fail to give your body time to recover, the uh, damage to the muscle builds up and you put yourself at risk for injury. And now into the all-important topic of injury prevention. It's very important to begin with a proper warm-up before exercise. Uh, this Slow increase in activity level will loosen and warm up your joints and muscles. Begin with gradually increasing your range of motion of your joints with slow, gentle motions without resistance until you get your full motion. Do not jump into high intensity exercise without a proper warm up because your muscles and joints are at increased risk for injury. After a warm up, it's important to perform a, a period of stretching to help your joints and muscles prepare for the exercise planned. Um, start easy and slow as you begin exercise and as you get better and better and more active with time, you can become more and more advanced with your stretching. And do not forcefully stretch your joints uh, to the point of pain. Don't rock, perform a nice, slow, steady stretch. Uh, this is least risk of uh, stress straining or tearing your muscles or tendons. If you rock against your joint, you're increasing your risk of injury. Other techniques of preventing injury are proper hydration. Uh, it's important to begin the hydration before you start working out. Consume small amounts of water to hydrate your body before exercise. Uh, don't get behind on your hydration, allows you to stay hydrated throughout your exercise and after the exercise. You're getting ahead of the game. During your workout, take many small sips of electrolyte drinks such as um, Gatorade or Powerade or other uh, drinks that have electrolytes which help replace the minerals and um, other nutrients that your body loses while you exercise. And it's important to match your intake to your effort level. If you're going for a nice gentle stroll on a chilly morning, you may not need to drink as much as if you're going for a long run or bike on a very hot day. You're going to sweat a lot more and your activity level is a lot higher. It's important to drink more than you would if you're going for a nice leisurely walk. And after the workout, it's important to consume liquids with carbohydrates and proteins because this aids your recovery of your muscles and your glycogen stores within your body. This allows you to exercise more, longer, and more frequently, uh, which again is the goal of everything we're trying to do. 
Now, after you finish your exercise, it's important to have a cool down session. Do not suddenly stop high intensity exercise. When you exercise at a high intensity level, your muscles produce lactic acid and other metabolic uh, byproducts, which can cause muscle soreness and aches and cramps. So if you suddenly stop working out, these toxins within your muscles cause damage. So a slow workout at the end of your exercise uh, speeds your recovery by letting your body clear the muscle of the lactic acid and other metabolites. Again, this will help speed your recovery and prevent muscle injuries. After your cool down, do some gentle stretching again and also perform any core strengthening exercises at this time. So focus on the core of your body will help your back and everyone has a backache and making your core stronger makes everyone's back feel better and everyone's happier. All right, now you've had a nice workout, you built up a nice sweat, go ahead and reward yourself with a nice hot bath, shower, or even a massage. Uh, the hot water helps soothe your muscles and help them recover. And a massage may help uh, prevent muscle soreness by again helping the body uh, eliminate the metabolites such as lactic acid from your muscles. Now after you exercise, it's important to exercise caution because you're fatigued, uh, both your muscles and your mind, and your reaction time may be decreased and you may slip in your shower or uneven surfaces. So it's important to be careful and choose sensible shoe wear. Uh, wearing slippery shoes after working out uh, may be a poor, poor choice. All right, now relax, take a load off. You've had a nice long exercise, you've warmed up, you've stretched, you've exercised, you've had a nice cool down session, you stretched again, now you've taken a nice massage, now relax. You've Reward yourself with some time off and allow your body to recover. As you get older, your body takes longer to recover. And it's important to give your body time to heal because this prevents overuse injuries like tendonitis, strains and pulls of your muscles like your hamstring or back, and other more serious injuries that can result. As well, you need to remember to add days of rest between your workouts to allow your body to recover. When you're younger, you could probably exercise every single day and your body felt fine. But as you get a little bit older, give yourself some time on the day off. Alternate the days of activity between your upper body or lower body weight versus uh, cardiovascular exercises. Again, add variety to your workout. It's important to prevent overuse injuries and keep your body strong as a whole. And the best advice for preventing injury is to listen to your body. Uh, your body will tell you what it's capable of doing and when you're overdoing it. When you start exercising, gradually increase your activity level. If you haven't run in several years, don't jump in and do a half marathon. Do a 5K. Do a short run around the block. Give your body time to adjust and get stronger so you can do the longer activities that you want to do. And remember, give yourself plenty of rest. It's very, very important. And when you think about starting exercise um, activity, think about getting the help of a trainer or a therapist. It's fun, try a new class, try Pilates, try a spin bike, try a new type of uh, jazzercise or um, yoga even. They will help demonstrate proper technique and form while you learn this new activity. And they'll introduce new different exercises as you get better and better. You'll introduce harder and harder yoga poses as you become more and more an expert of yoga. And they're able to monitor your improvement and tell you and show you how much you're improving. And best of all, find out great workout buddies. You can encourage each other and help each other along uh, while you exercise. So my recommendations for exercise. Wear supportive shoes. It's very important to choose the right shoe wear because if you fall and injure yourself, not only do you set yourself behind, but the injury may require a prolonged period of immobilization, prolonged physical therapy, or even surgery. So it's very, very important to choose proper shoe wear. 
don't wear sandals or other shoes that may catch or slip. Low, choose low impact exercises. Okay, think walking, think cycling, think elliptical in the gym. Uh, low impact exercises such as aquatic exercises are very important because they take the load off your joints and allow you to move and exercise and build strength. And this limits the damage and uh, pain in your joints. And focus on, when you're exercising, focus on your balance, your core strength. So again, yoga is very important. Uh, focusing on your core strength will assist your, your back, your posture, and your ability to do things. And balance is also very important to focus on because as you get older, you tend to have poorer and poorer balance due to both your vestibular system, which is how your body maintains its uh, equilibrium and balance, as well as your muscle strength and reaction time. So focusing on your balance will help improve your overall um, ability to perform exercise, as well as prevent uh, injuries from falls. And above all, have fun. None of this is any good to you if you're not having any fun. So make these activities fun, have friends, do activities together, and then reward yourself afterwards for having fun with each other. Okay, and now what happens when you exercise? What if you start having pain? Stop, if you're really having pain, I'm not talking about muscle soreness, I'm talking about genuine pain, stop. It's very important to stop because you gotta listen to your body as I mentioned earlier. Apply ice, okay, make sure the ice is not directly against the skin or you can burn your skin and uh, cycle the ice on and off, 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off. This allows your skin time to warm back up, revascularize and prevent injury. Because if you leave ice on the skin too long, you can actually burn yourself, similar to heat, okay? Take anti-inflammatories such as Advil, Aleve, or other um, anti-inflammatories. Uh, it's important to check with your primary care if you're healthy enough to take these medications. In fact, check with your primary care when you talk to them before you start exercising. And apply a compressive wrap, if you have it, in the area of pain. If you experience pain around the knee, apply a lightly compressive ACE wrap. This often helps with swelling and it helps with pain. It's a good way to also hold your ice pack on. And rest, take time off to heal. When you start feeling pain, your body's telling you you're doing it too hard, too fast, or too long. So listen to your body. Take the time off to let the area of body that's bothering you heal up. Take the time to exercise other body parts. Say you're having a, a sore knee while you're exercise. Start working the upper body or start working on your back and your other core muscles. Take that opportunity to work on other body parts while the body part that's hurting is healing. Go take a hot bath or get a massage also helps recover from the uh, over in, overwork injury. Um, eat a healthy meal. It's important to provide your body with excellent nutrition to help your body heal. This is a good combination of fruits, vegetables, protein, whether vegetarian or meat, and uh, carbohydrates. A well-stocked variety of different vegetables, different fruits, gives you all the different vitamins, fiber, and minerals and other uh, building blocks necessary for a healthy body. And the protein helps your body regenerate uh, damaged muscles and tendons. So it's important to have a good combination of all of the above and also carbohydrates to restore your um, glycogen stores, which is the, the, uh, the gas that your body runs off of when you exercise. Okay, what happens if the pain persists? Okay, you've taken a hot bath, you've taken an anti-inflammatory, you've put an A-strap on it, you've taken time off, and your knee still hurts. Okay, if this is not a sudden injury or severe pain, see your primary care. The primary care doctor may give you some stronger anti-inflammatory medications or creams in term, or pills, as well as a physical therapy. They may consider to get x-rays if your uh, problem is severe enough. This may help show if you have any arthritis or any other injuries. Finally, what if the pain persists after seeing your primary care or if you had a sudden injury such as a fall or a pop inside your joints or um, other injury with severe swelling or bruising. These are all indications you see your orthopedic surgeon. 
okay, along with severe pain, um, or no improvement after you've done therapy, anti-inflammatories, compression, rest, ice, and decreased activity, all right? Other reasons to see your orthopedic surgeon, if you have an inability to walk, you're unable to perform activities that you like, you have a significant weakness in your body, you have difficulty sleeping, or you have an inability to elevate your arm over your shoulder. It's very important that you take care of your rotator cuff as you get older, um, because I do a lot of rotator cuff surgeries, it, it's, it's very painful and it really limits people's activities. So really be careful. If you have a problem lifting your arm above your shoulder after you work out, definitely see your orthopedic surgeon. Um, pain after, uh, if the pain is affecting your lifestyle or your quality of life. Um, these are all very important reasons to see your orthopedic surgeon. And we're here to help. And we have very, very different amounts of uh, treatments from non-operative management, injections, uh, different therapy exercises, um, down to surgeries. Uh, small surgeries such as arthroscopic surgery and larger surgeries uh, such as uh, joint replacements. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, tuning in today. I appreciate your time. I hope you've learned something. I hope you apply some of the principles I've discussed today with you. And um, again, my name is uh, Dr. Jake Nee. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here with uh, Northwell Health. And uh, I have my office's phone number up on the screen. If you have any questions or comments, on, and if you want to see me, please give my office a phone call. And have a great day.